Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Last of Fred today, where we answer your frequently asked questions. And with us today is Dr. Thomas Christopher, who is the lead scientist on the ground in St. Vincent. Good morning, Thomas. How are you doing? Good morning, Stacey. I'm good. good. And this is actually our last interview with TC on his rotation. He'll certainly continue to be involved in the eruption, um, but this is the last week of his, uh, his uh, stint as lead scientist of the team. So TC, I, I know that in recent weeks, the activity has been more or less steady, um, not necessarily increasing or decreasing significantly. So can you just, again, remind our viewers and listeners exactly what is happening at the volcano? Yes. Well, yeah, I think there's, there's some confusion amongst the population as to if the volcano is erupting or not. And, and based on, on the scientific de definition of an eruption, as long as a volcano is, is putting magma or lava at the surface and placing lavas at the surface, then it's actually in an eruption. Um, in some cases, these eruptions could be very gentle as is the case now where you've got um, lavas coming up really slowly, building a dome and releasing gas. Or in other cases, they can be quite violent as was the case in the 1979 eruption and also the 1902 eruption. So an effusive eruption, an example of that would be the 1971 eruption. So as we've seen this, um, this volcano has done this before. So I guess the fact that it's not generating um, explosions. Some people think that it's not erupting, but it actually is. And to be fair, this is the sort of eruption you want, these really gentle ones, which are non-violent and not so much threatening unless you're right up next to the um, crater rim or, or trying to go down into the crater. But one of the things that this um, sort of eruption would do is generate gases because it, they tend to be more or less drawn out compared to the, um, the explosive eruptions. Explosions tend to happen, bang, 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 and then they stop and go away. However, you can have effusive eruptions that last for months or even years. And basically what you're having then is just a constant um, expulsion of gas from this volcano. And as quite a few people have seen in images or people who have looked at this volcano, there's proper damage to the vegetation down the of the volcano from the gases coming up. So basically, that's the main impact so far. And the good thing is that we don't have any villages or towns immediately down the of the volcano. So, so very few people are actually breathing in that gas. And, and that's a very good thing. So at present, it's erupting, but it's still a gentle eruption and it's not dangerous to the population as we speak. All right. And I know that um, Nemo has been doing a lot of outreach in different communities, and they've been talking about three scenarios. They're basically giving three things that could happen. Um, can, you, can you talk to us about that? Yeah. Well, basically what, what we would have done, well, not me, but um, people who, who did this kind of job and would have worked at SRC in the past, they would have looked at the different scenarios presented by historical eruptions, you know, how they unfolded and the, the, the kind of areas they would have impacted. And basically they've, they've figured out that this volcano has basically um, two end members. It either has an effusive end member, which is what we're dealing with now, or it, have an, or it has an explosive end member, which for example, would be the 1979 and the 1902 eruption. So the idea is 1979 was also a hybrid. It started explosive and then it went effusive. So the fact that this has gone effusive initially does not rule out the fact that it can go explosive. Given what it has done in the past and given what you know it's capable of, then these are the boundaries that you would have set. So we know that it can go very explosive or just remain effusive, but we need to keep monitoring so we can have a good idea. If it decides to go explosive, hopefully we should be able to see it coming. So it could, it could, it could stop now today, or it could <laughs> continue to be effusive for several months or weeks or months and then stop. Or it could 
be, become exclusive. That's what we're saying, right? And I know we don't know over what time period we asked that question a few times. So those are the three things that could essentially happen. Yes. And um, I guess there are different likelihoods of, of each scenario. I think the most likely option right now was or is it for it to stay effusive. Um, it doesn't rule out the, the possibility that it can it can go to um, explosive and it does not rule out the possibility that it could stop. Um, but based on, on what we see, the, if, it's, if it's a purely effusive eruption, you would probably expect it to go on for a bit longer than two months. So given that, I would say, yes, it would probably stop eventually, but stopping right now may not be um, a high probability simply because the effusive eruptions we've seen here tend to last a bit longer than a couple of months, but that's just based on history. It could prove us wrong, which volcanoes always do. So, yeah, but I think the explosive option is also at a lower probability than either it's stopping or remaining effusive as well. And until we see that change, I think we, it's safe for us to say that the volcano poses no threat to the public at the moment. But all three possibilities are in the back. It's just which one we think is more likely than the other. And does this happen on other islands? So for example, um, for Montserrat, I suppose most people will, will remember, you know, explosive eruptions and lots of a huge impact in terms of Plymouth and movement of people and so forth. So um, were there effusive eruptions in Montserrat? A couple of people have been asking, is this unique to St. Vincent? Does this happen in other islands in the Caribbean? Yeah, it's, it's not unique to St. Vincent. Lava domes are a common feature around the world and also in the Caribbean. Um, if, you, if you go up the island chain, you, you would find old lava domes in, in islands like Dominica, St. Lucia, um, Guadeloupe, uh, Mount Pele in Martinique that had a lava dome. And the eruption in Montserrat was, was mostly effusive. Um, the thing about Montserrat is that the configuration of the volcano is different. So the crater is a bit smaller. So we had this dome that grew out of the crater fairly quickly. Your crater here is much larger, or the crater at La Sofre is much larger. And the current dome is much smaller. The current dome is probably maybe like 7 million cubic meters, maybe 8 million tops, given the last measurement and, and based on how fast we think it may have been growing. In Montserrat, we've had domes of up to 200 million cubic meters. So they're much larger. So most of the flows that we got from Montserrat were from that dome collapsing, but there were explosions. I think the first set of explosions happened proper in 1997. So that was roughly two years after the eruption started. We started getting these, these explosions, which we call volcano explosions. So an effusive eruption is not uncommon for the region. And the, the way how your, your volcano behaves is a function of the chemistry of the lavas. So because of your chemistry, of the lavas you get here, then you get these lava dome building um, eruptions, these sort of sticky lavas. But anyone who's familiar with Sufria and who's gone up to that crater, what they would have noticed is that the, the crater itself is built from lava flows. Mm -hmm. So at some point in time in the volcano's history, it was erupting lavas which were not as sticky as the ones now. For some reason, which I don't know, it started um, building domes in its eruptions. And dome building eruptions are more dangerous than these ones that generate lava flows. And for one simple reason, the stickier lavas tend to trap gases and gases drive explosions. So the fact that this volcano is generating an effusive eruption and generating a dome, is a very good thing because you mean the gases can escape fairly slowly and there's less risk of an explosion. If they were to start coming out fast, then that would be a problem. So TC, I know that you're wrapping up um, as lead for the, for the team on island. And I know you, of course, you know, continue to be working on the eruption as we all are. Do uh, you have any, any key messages or lessons learned from your, um, from the, over the last few weeks as, serving as a, as a lead on island? Yeah, I think um, I've learned quite a lot since coming here for this eruption. Uh, when I came here, I, I came with a mindset 
of being able to do the exact same same thing, same sort of stuff I was doing in Montreal. I mean, th this volcano proved me wrong. You know, the the system is quite different, and the kind of signals we're getting is quite different. And I had to adjust what I do in Montreal to fit this eruption. So I think the message I got from this volcano is that you know we, we need to keep an eye on it because we are not quite sure what it's going to do and we need to keep monitoring it and react accordingly based on what we've seen. So I think the main message is that we're going to try our best to keep our monitoring to the, to the optimum. We're going to inform Nemo about what we think the volcano is doing and the people of St. Vincent need to be aware that Nemo is the voice in terms of what is happening at La Soufri. So they should ignore everyone else and listen to Nemo and the government. And if there's a problem, Nemo will let them know what the situation is. Thanks a lot, TC, for that. Um, so we're going to wrap up here. Thanks a lot for viewing. And again, reminding, as TC said, that Nemo and the UESRC are the official sources of information on the Laxifre eruption and that visits to the crater at this time are strictly prohibited. Thanks a lot, TC, and take care. All right, thank you.